Hello, this is Bryce Hemethal, and I'm a certified application engineer from Go Engineer. In today's quick tips videos, we will talk about using SOLIDWORKS routing electrical to create cables in the 3D environment as well as creating 2D drawings. But before we start doing that, we're going to talk about this routing library manager. This comes with the SOLIDWORKS routing add-in and what two modules we'll be looking in today mostly is the routing component wizard and the cable wire library wizard. So we'll first start off by using the routing component wizard. This wizard's used to help us create these connection points, what we call C points in SOLIDWORKS, and it also helps us make mate references. So when we insert these components into our assembly, they automatically pop on and make a couple mates for us. And then finally, we'll use it to add it to our library and throw any metadata that we'd like also like to include with the file. So oops, we're in SOLIDWORKS now with just a part file here. So I'll go to routing, routing tools, and then the routing library manager. Here, we'll go, there's several wizards. We're going to go ahead and start by using the routing component wizard. And I start off by selecting the routing type, which is electrical, and what type of component, which this is a connector. So we'll start off by adding our first C point. You'll see all I do is select a face and a point, and it creates that C point for us. And now I'll go ahead and select the diameter and length for the stub that's going to be popped out of here when I drop this in an assembly. And then the really important field is the 2D schematic pin ID. So we're going to have to call each one, each C point a different 2D schematic pin ID. So when I route my cable to it, it knows to take this wire from that cable and go to that connection point. So we'll see that again come up later. Also, you might see that we have a field for how much additional internal wire. So when we really route these cables and wires, we get really accurate calculations for our wire lengths. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and finish this third one up real quickly. And we'll label this last schematic pin ID. And there we go. So you could keep adding more if you had a, more pins, but we only have a three pin connector, so that's perfect. Now this next portion is to create the mate reference. So I'll go ahead and select three faces, this one, this one, and our final one. And then you specify for what type of mate you want those to go looking for. So when I insert this into my assembly, what type of mates are going to be assigned. There we go. And we have a one mate reference. You can add more if you wish to do so. And we just got to the part validity check and we passed that. Here's a good dialog box to associate more component attributes if I chose to put some more component properties with it. But I'll go ahead and name my component 3pin female and this is where I'm going to be adding this component to my library. And there we go. So we'll come back and use this component in a couple minutes. So now that we're done turning my part file into a routing component, we can go ahead and talk about the cable wire library wizard. This is the wizard we use to create cables or wires and to add cores to the cables if we choose to create a cable and then to define properties about those, whether that be the color, the outside diameter, the name of the wire, or the cores going through a cable. Um, information such like that, that pertaining to the cable. So we'll start off by going to routing, routing tools, and then the routing library manager. And here we'll go ahead and open up the cable wire library wizard. And I'm going to go ahead and open up an existing XML. Um, if you create, want to create new one, you could go ahead and do that as well. But here we'll go ahead and create a new cable by just double clicking in this field. And then I could just start filling out certain properties. So I'll call the name of it, um, the part number, and then my add a little description about my cable. Um, some of these, I could fill out the OD or the min bend radius as well. The number of cores here is driven by the table down here. So as you see, as I take away some, now I only have two cores, but I want to add one more, and there's the third. I'll go and fill some information about this. I could fill out the size gauge, the OD, the color. So I'll change the color to yellow, let's say, hit OK, and fill out the minimum bend radius or the seal if I wish to do so. But remember, hit the Save button at the top when you're done. And we could go ahead and close this now. There we go. So now we'll go ahead and start using our routing component and our cable we just created. So I'll go ahead and go to my routing library over here, the electrical library, grab that connector and go ahead and drop it. I'll go ahead and select my routing template. And you'll see it throws me in auto route mode, but I'll go ahead and turn that off real quickly and drop this next connector in here. There we go. 
And now you'll notice that we have three stubs because we chose three C points. So all I have to do is start by routing between two of these stubs. So I'll go from one connector to the next. And a very important question was whether I wanted to create a multi-pin junction, and I did. So now what it does is it creates the segments of the spline, which I can then auto-route to. So I'm going to go ahead and space this out a little bit so we could route to it. So let's go ahead and use our auto-route. Select the point of the C point, and there we go. And I'm going to pin it here so I could do it one or two more times. And there we go. And we have created our multi-pin junction there. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and move these points a little bit to give me some space for my multi-pin junction. This point I'm dragging right now, that's where the jacket's going to fan out from. So I'm going to go ahead and select the point and the C point. And there we go. I'll pin again to do it once more. There we go, so we could see our nice fan out. So right now, there's no wires or cables going through my route. So what we have to do when we're routing is come back and edit the wires going through there. So we're going to go ahead and right-click and edit our wires. Here we'll go ahead and add, and it's looking at that XML file we were just editing. And I'll grab my three-phase wire and add it to my selection. And now you see I have the cable and then the three wires in that cable that I can go ahead and select. I'm going to start off by selecting the first core, phase one selecting the component, selecting the egg of the component, and then now this is where I specify which pin that wire is going from. So A1 to A1, remember to hit that reroute wires. And I'm going to do this a couple more times. So just change it to B2 and B2. And just remember after each time to hit that was reroute wires so it routes that segment. And I'll do it one more time from here to here and reroute from C3 to C3 and hit that button once more. And you'll see it has the links up here in the field, but we'll go ahead and look at that again when I get to the drawing. So now you'll see the nice fan out from my wires, the different colors coming in. If you want to get a nice pretty picture for marketing. But now we'll go ahead and flatten her out. And it's going to make me save this file, which I'll go ahead and do so. And here's some information about our flatten route we can go ahead and play around with. I'm going to leave it at all the defaults. And you'll see what it does is it flattens our route into an annotation drawing. So we can go ahead and get, see what information we get out of this. First, we get the connector tables. So it tells us what wires are going into each pin and the color associated with them. Very nice for when we're assembling this cable. And same thing on the other side for the second connector. We get the nice lengths for our fan outs here. And I've chosen for this template to round up. And then finally, what we have over here is a circuit summary. So we see each cable, each cores in the cable, and the front two for each one of those. And then finally, our bill of materials. Well, thank you for watching this quick tips video from Go Engineer for SolidWorks routing electrical cables. This was Bryce Menthol. Have a great day.